Hello everyone, welcome to Late Breaking. I'm Sangan Sage, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 greatest F1 title decisions. Scrapping, get ready, and ignore my overgrown hair. It's going to be a wild ride. And number 10 is the 2007 battle between Reichenen and the McLarens of Hamilton and Alonso. In 2007, the McLarens looked as though they were reigning supreme, having dominated for the majority of the season. Hamilton looked set to be the first ever rookie world champion, something that had not been done before. In the last stint of the season, Kimi Reichenen put in several fantastic performances to ensure that he was able to shout of the championship going into the final race of the season. Of course, he had to hope results went his way and he was able to pick up pieces left, right and centre from the McLarens. Hamilton was the favourite going into Brazil, but disaster struck for the rookie. Gearbox issues meant that he was unable to finish the race and he could not claim the title of his rookie season. That meant Kimi Raikkonen just had the mighty Alonso left to battle with. Alonso wasn't up to the challenge, finishing in P3 and Kimi did everything he could, coming home with the victory. That means that Kimi won his only season in 2007 after an epic fight at the final race of the season. In at number 9 is the infamous battle in 1976 between Lauda and Hunt. Lauda, in the first part of the season, absolutely dominated. The man was unstoppable, a force that we all know and have loved him for for many years. Unfortunately, halfway through the season, at the German Grand Prix, the infamous crash happened, and Lauda was out of the season. Or so we thought. Hunt had taken serious advantage of the fact that Lauda was no longer present on the grid, and was starting to climb his way back up towards the League of the Championship. Incredibly, after just six weeks of recovery, Lauda was back in the racing seat and was pulling off one of sporting's greatest ever comebacks across any sport. I don't care what you say, it's across any sport. The final race of the season was to be held in Japan, Suzuka, famous for its wet weather and typhoons. Lauda, before the race, claimed that the circuit was too dangerous to race upon, and in the second lap, he retired. He was joined by a few of the other racers, but Hunt was not one of them. Hunt persevered, he pushed on, he had the danger in his eyes, but he could sniff a world size at the end of it. Hunt led the race for a lot of it, but started to have issues and began to drop back through the field. But luckily enough for Hunt, he didn't drop back too far, finishing off the race in third place and claiming his one and only world title. In at number eight is the 1997 battle between Jacques Villeneuve and Michael Schumacher. Schumacher held just a one point lead over the Canadian going into the final race of the season. Jacques Villeneuve was only in his second year of competing and the fact that he was up the front was quite impressive. During the race, Schumacher held the lead throughout the majority of it, but Jacques Villeneuve was closing the gap. Unable to pull away from his championship rival, Jacques Villeneuve got so close that he was finally ready to make a move. Daringly, chucking it down the inside of the Ferrari, Jacques Villeneuve saw his one chance to claim the world title. Schumacher, on the other hand, who left the inside open, was unwilling to let the Canadian go through, and turned the car in, collecting the Canadian. Jacques Villeneuve was able to limp the car home, Michael Schumacher had to DNF, and the FIA decided that the move was deliberate. Something had been tried a few years earlier that had gone the other way for Schumacher, we might get onto that later. But for now, the FIA disqualified Schumacher from the entire season, meaning that Jacques Villeneuve was taking home his one and only world title, one of the most controversial moments in Formula 1 to that very point. During the incident's occurrence, Martin Brundle famously said, that didn't work, Michael. You've hit the wrong part, my friend. In at number seven is the 2012 massive epic fight between two modern greats, Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso. Vettel was clinging on to a small lead going into the final race of the season, and it was going to come down to whoever could finish on top here in Brazil. The team, on the other hand, felt confident. Vettel had a fantastic car, had some great results under his belt, and all he needed was to get another win to ensure that the title was going to be his and he'd become a triple world champion. It wasn't as simple as it sounded. On the opening lap, drama ensued. Vettel had spun, reducing himself all the way to 22nd on the grid and was going to have to have a comeback. We all have a comeback and Vettel quite nicely delivered. After safety cars, slow pit stops, and incidents occurred throughout the race, Vettel somehow managed to claw himself all the way back up to sixth place. This was enough to take home that world title, and his devastating rival, Fernando Alonso, had only managed to come home in second place. Not enough to win that elusive third title for the Spaniard. 
In at number six is the 1990 incident between Ayrton Senna and Pross. Senna was lining up for the 1990 GP in Suzuka, Japan on pole position, doing everything he could to ensure that he was able to take that title home. Controversially in that race, pole position was starting on the dirty side of the track, very unusual for a Formula 1 Grand Prix. Protesting, Ayrton wanted to switch the side of the grid that pole position started on, feeling that if you secure pole position, you should be given the best advantage, starting on the clean side of the track. His rival Prost, in second place for this race, was starting on the clean side of the track, and Senna famously vowed that he would be leading coming out of turn one in the first lap. The lights turn green, and because it's the dirty side, Senna gets a poor start. Prost does manage to jump him, and going in towards turn one, controversy ensues, collision happens, Senna, Prost come together, and both of them are taken out of the Grand Prix. With only one race left to go, Prost is unable to secure enough points to topple his rival Senna, meaning that Senna walks home with his second world title. In at number 5 is the 1994 incident between Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill. Remember what we spoke about earlier with Jacques Villeneuve? Well, this one goes a little bit different. Damon Hill had won 5 of the last 6 Grand Prix leading up to this race and was within one point of Michael Schumacher's championship lead, meaning that if Hill had beaten Michael Schumacher, he'd be claimed as the world champion. On lap 36, Hill had caught the German. He caught right up to him and was looking to make the move, a championship winning move. And this whole sequence of events could be foreshadowing for what was about to happen a few years later between Schumacher and Villeneuve. Hill tried the desperate move. He knew that if he'd taken it, the title would be his. But Schumacher, and many think this was deliberate, collided with Hill, taking him out of the race, and this meant that Schumacher was crowned champion. Now, many people to this point still feel like it's deliberate and that Hill was taking it away from. As we know from previous in the list, and of course, to you Formula 1 fans, events technically happened again with Schumacher and another driver of the same team. This time, it went the other way, of course, and Villeneuve took that title and Schumacher was not giving it, having been disqualified. But maybe the signs are already there. Let me know in the comments. If you're enjoying the list, please do think about subscribing, leaving a like, and let me know what your list of top 10 title deciders are. We're going to move on now. In at number four is our second three-way battle for a title. It's the 1986 fight between Mansell, Prost, and Piquet. Seven points separated three of the biggest names in Formula One going into the final race of the season. All three of the famous names suffered trials and tribulations through the Grand Prix. Mansell got off to an absolutely appalling start, which meant that he was far behind, only to have this cancelled out by a PK spin, which saw him struggling and Prost getting a puncture. Somehow, regardless of the issue, the three drivers ended up in second, third and fourth. And, in doing so, this meant that Mansell was doing enough to win the title. Later on in the race, Rosberg, who was leading the race, retired, elevating them all to first, second and third. Still, Mansell has enough to win the title. But then, with 20 laps to go, Nigel Mansell is struck with terrible luck and receives a tyre-shattering puncture, meaning he can no longer go on with the race. This leaves just Prost and PK left. Prost, with his witty ability and his smart thinking, was able to fend off some of the best racers of that time, and he did take home the title, holding on to the title that he won previously last year, and was the first person to do it since Jack Brabham. In at number three, we have our third and final triple wave fight for a title, and it's all being hosted in the brilliant Mexico. An epic three-way battle between British legends Surtees, Clark and Hill was about to unfold. Drama would come across the field, but there would be one man that took the title. All three drivers throughout the race at one point looked as though they would be the ones to take home the title. Hill was the first early contender. Holding down third place comfortably, it looked as though everything was going his way. Until disaster struck. His exhaust failed and meant he was no longer able to continue with the race. The chance of winning the title now fell to Jim Clark, who was out front and running clear. The points fell in his favour. Disaster strikes. With two laps to go, engine issues hit Jim Clark, and he's no longer able to continue. This hands John Surtees a second place in the Ferrari, and he becomes the first man ever to win a world title on both two wheels and four wheels. 
Coming in at second place is the 1989 squabble, but once again between Prost and Senna. These two were filled with controversy from the moment they came together on the racetrack, and they've appeared twice on this list now. Once again, we're back at the penultimate race of the season, in Suzuka, and controversy strikes. Senna is chasing down Prost. Senna needs to get past Prost to ensure that he can take the title fight to the final race of the season. Senna has to beat Prost to make this happen. Although, Collision happens. The two title contenders collide at the Casio Triangle. Prost has to retire the car, he can't continue anymore. Senna, on the other hand, gets a good old push from the mechanics and he's through. And somehow, with a damaged car, Senna is able to win the race, crossing the line knowing that he can take home the title in the final Grand Prix of that season. Although, an immediate decision is made by the FIA and they rule out Senna's position and finishing due to the fact that he cut the chicane where the two previously had crashed. Unable to go in the other direction, Senna was confused, angry, he had to go through that chicane to make sure he got back on the track. Nonetheless, the decision would not be overturned, and Prost would take home his title. Many do think that this was controversial, many think Prost was given the title due to his connections with the FIA. Prost famously said that he was happy to be leaving the team, and was no longer teammates with Senna, who was famously very difficult to work with. And that takes us down to number one. The 2008 fight between Lewis Hamilton and Felipe Massa. What's about to ensue is one of Formula 1's and Sporting's most iconic moments in history. The 2008 title gave us a final lap pass for a World Championship, not something you see very often. Although, it started much simpler at the beginning of the race. Hamilton, who was looking to avenge the loss of the title in his rookie year last season, wanted to prove the point that he could win it this time around, and, going into the final race of the season, had a seven-point lead over Felipe Massa, much due to his consistency throughout the entire season. During the race, Massa led his home Grand Prix, the fan favourite, looking to take home that first title, and the first one for Ferrari, since Michael Schumacher, of course. Hamilton, on the other hand, was settling in fifth place and doing just enough to make sure that he brought home that world title. But will it end as simply as that? We all know the answer. It's a big fat no. Out of nowhere, a sudden downpour caused chaos across the grid, and some drivers didn't know what to do with their strategy. Some dived onto slicks, some onto inters. People were unsure what tyre was the best possible, and Hamilton was really starting to pay the price due to his decision. Struggling for grip, Hamilton was then passed by Sebastian Vettel. This dropped the Brit down to 6th place, and meant that he would lose the championship by one point. Massa had done everything he could. He drove a consistent race, his strategy was fine, he had no troubles, and he managed to cross the line in 1st place. The Ferrari garage erupting in joy, celebrating. The, the Massa family absolutely exuberated by the performance that their, their, you know, their hero, their local hero, had put in. He was champion for 30 seconds. Hamilton on the final lap, coming through the mid-section of the track, came across a struggling Toyota. Glock was on the wrong tyre. Glock was struggling to get round the corner. And on the final corner, the famous words echoed from the con box. Is that Glock? Is that Glock going slow? It was. On that final lap, with just metres to go, and Glock struggling for grip, Hamilton managed to pass the Toyota. Hamilton had reclaimed the fifth place he needed to win the title. He crossed the line, and... History has it, Lewis Hamilton won his first title. I wonder what happened to that Lewis fella. If you have enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the countdown, please do let me know in the comments. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel, would like to see more content. Give it a like, it does really help us out. Let me know your top 10, what was your biggest title decider? Were there some that I missed? There definitely are. I'll be really interested to know. Thanks for ignoring my floppy silly hair. I need a haircut, they're not open in England. We're gonna see lots more F1 content, of course the season starts with us soon. We're also gonna be talking very soon about the Drive to Survive series on Netflix, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I've been Samuel Sage, and remember, keep breaking late. <laughs>